Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you the new AI features inside of Articulate Rise. Now, last week I talked about the AI features inside of Storyline, so if you wanna check that video out, I will go ahead and link that video at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. But let's talk about just kind of first impressions of AI inside of Rise and some of the different things that you can do inside of Rise. And in future videos, I'm gonna just focus in on different parts of this. Now, the AI Assistant is actually an additional cost, and I don't know the exact cost, I can't find it on the website, but from, from what I'm hearing, it's about 250 a year. Now, you may think this is great, you may think, why would I do that? Because I already have ChatGPT, I'm already paying for, I get Dolly, I get other things, Grammarly, that's fine because a lot of this you can kind of do, but some of the benefits of the AI Assistant inside of Rise allow you to adjust content. So you can just have text inside of there and it will flip content into different interactive pieces, which it could save you a lot of time, which therefore time is money and it might be worth it. So it's enough to explore it. You can do a free trial of it so you can test it out, make sure that it's what you need or something that's worth the cost go ahead and test that out. But the point of this video is to show you what it is to kind of give you an idea of how to use it inside of Rise 360. So let's go ahead and go into Rise 360. So I'm in my account right now, 360.articulate.com, and I'm gonna go into the Rise section here. So I can go into an existing project or I can dive into this getting started with AI. So let's just play around with that one because it has some content in there for us to automatically switch over and to test things out specifically. So let's go in here and you can see the instant converts. This just has content in here and you can see how to convert a text box and so it will walk you through that. But let's focus in on a couple different things. Anytime you see a text block, there is these three little stars and that is the AI assistant. Up on the top is also the AI assistant that helps you generate a block from scratch. You can edit a block. You can generate an image similar to Dolly, similar to Midjourney and Firefly, Adobe Firefly. You can generate images right inside of Storyline. You can also generate a knowledge check, a lesson summary, or you can do magic text import. Now, I'm not saying that this will take over any of your work, but I, what I am saying is there still needs to be that human element to it because even though, and I've been working with ChatGPT to generate uh, custom code, even though it can generate code for me, I still need to direct it on how to do that. It helps speed up time in development, but I still need to know how to fix some of the stuff that ChatGPT doesn't do exactly right. I still need to know what different parts need to be used. And so there still is that instructional design element where if I can use this, it'll help speed things up and maybe it will help you know, with some insights that I didn't think about, but there still needs to be that human element to it where you go in and you need to adjust it, tweak it, guide it, different things like that. So I wouldn't be afraid of it. No matter what you think of AI, it is kind of taking over things at the moment, but it's if you embrace it and you are using it, I think that's where you have um, nothing to worry about as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so you can also adjust the AI settings, you can do AI tips and tricks, and you can also share feedback here. Let's start with generating a block. And so now it's gonna say, are there different things that you want to generate about? Now, anytime I'm generating a block, there is this source content. The source content could be something from my own documentation. It could be a website, and you might need to save the website as a PDF, which you can do, and then you upload that. So in fact, I wanna do that from my website here. So let's just go to learningdojo.ninja. And if I was to hit print, so command P, and then I save this as a PDF, let's just try this out. I haven't tried this out at all, but let's just try this out and see what happens here. So I'm gonna save this as a PDF on my desktop. And now let's go in here and let's generate a block using that PDF. So I'm gonna generate a block, go to source content, and then I can, this is a previous one that I've done from a different course, so it does remember some of the content there. Now I can use source documents from certain pages, and so if I already had some pages with text, I can use that as the source file, but I'm gonna go ahead and upload a document. So I'm gonna click on choose, click on here, and click upload. Now it will upload that as my source document. Once that is done uploading, I can just click on save here. So I'm gonna click save, and now that is going to be a source. It's going to be a reference where 
um, the AI assistant's gonna go in and pull content from there. So I want to ask it to generate something and let's go into learning development authory tools and frameworks. And then let's do here where we can say build a block about the tools learning Dojo teaches on. Okay, so I didn't specify which block, but it does ask me which block or type of um, block that I want to add. So let's go ahead and do something like an accordion block. So it will give me the Articulate Story Length 360, Adobe Captivate X API Fundamentals, Articulate Rise Custom Squirm, and HTML5 Video, which I offer courses on every single one of those. And so it was able to read that document for me and use that as the outline. So let's click on Use as Outline, and then it's going to add those descriptions, which I'm actually surprised on. It has all of those descriptions, which I think are just these paragraphs right here. So it was able to identify that and then we can insert that as a block. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. The fact that I could take a PDF from a website, um, just basically hitting print on the website and saving it as a PDF instead of actually printing it, uploading it here and using that as part of my content. Now, if I click on this and expand it out, you can see how that content is there. Now, if I don't like this block, I want it to be something else, I can always use that AI assistant and then I can do instant convert to a flashcard. Let's do that and see what happens there. So on any of the blocks, I can convert it into something else. It will keep the previous block so I can delete that if I want to, but now I can select this to kind of flip over that text. That alone could be worth the money because being able to upload some of this content, I remember when I worked at Amazon, I had to read through a bunch of documentation to create courses and that documentation was painful, painful to read through. But um, I had to extract different parts out that were important and this could save me some time at least extracting them. Then I would want to go in and make sure that uh, the, the logical order makes sense. I'd probably wanna go in and make sure the instructions are not messed up. So there is still that human element to AI. But this just saves me a whole lot of time here. So I can go in and uh, add these different types of interactions and play around with that same type of content. Now I could come in and ask it to generate something else about like what are some of the, in fact, I could do that, like what are some of the quotes that are being used with uh, Learning Dojo of previous students? And I can do like a quote box and stuff. Or you could come in and click on AI box here and ask another question about that or even uh, give it some interactive video custom score uh, and I could dive into specific items if I want to talk and if I provide up more sources and I want to ask about, okay, what is covered in the Storyline 360 course? And I want to create an interaction based off of that. So a lot of different things that you could do with that AI block. But we also have the ability to generate an image. And this was similar to what we could do inside of Storyline if you checked out that last week. So in this case, let's go ahead and generate an image. Let's say we're generating a content for workplace safety. So I'm gonna describe an image here. Generate an image of a person wearing a hard hat and safety vest. Now I may wanna give it very specific instructions like have the vest be yellow, have the hard hat be orange or something like that if my organization uses that kind of content, but I'm just keeping it generic for now. The next thing is to pick the style. Now you can either just have it choose a style for you, or you could say, I like the 3D animation style, I like the cinematic photo style, or you can come in and give it a description because any of these, you'll notice that it has a description there. And that description I could copy and then I could go in and add to it. And so you can see here, separated by commas, film, bokeh, professional, 4K. So it's not really telling it specific things, but it's just giving it keywords to be able to establish the style. Then you could decide if you want this to be a landscape, you want it to be a square image, or you want it to be a portrait image. In this case, because it's probably going to be a block, I'm just gonna click on landscape and click on generate image. Now it's gonna generate that image and it's gonna give me four different options which I'm pretty impressed with this so far. So you can see here, it's got that cinematic photo. So that's the style that it's given me. I have a couple different options. Let's click on view. And you may wanna check like, okay, if the ear is in the right spots or if there's more than one hand or something like that, 
Then I can come in here and flip through these different images. I'm liking that one, and then I can click on download to download it, or I can click on insert image, and it will insert it as an image block. Now I can always change that block if I come over here, change it to text and image if I want it to have text as well. So now I can generate images. Instead of using Firefly, or instead of using Mid Journey, instead of using Dolly, I can use that here. Or, like I mentioned, if you still use Midjourney, you still use Dolly, you could still use those and import them into Rise. So some of the things that, like even with a PDF and the website, you could do some of that with chat, or you can do all of that with ChatGPT and have it generate um, some descriptions for you. But the nice thing about having it inside of Rise is it really keeps you at the instructional design focus. It extracts learning content and you can you don't have to define the persona. You don't have to define the, the role or the prompt as you are instructional designer. It kind of already knows that type of thing. So it's that is nice there and it generates blocks. It generates content and interactive stuff for you right inside of Rise, which is pretty cool. So that is the different things that you can do. You can generate the image. If you click on block library, it does have these AI blocks. And so there are different things that um, AI will do. So it generate a summary based off of additional content, the magic text import, let's select that. And then you can see right here, select the text box and then suggest structures if you want to have titles and descriptions. This one is like a process. You can just type in some text and then it will generate the block for you which you can kind of just do inside of the block itself. I'm not sure if that would save me a whole lot of time, but actually let's go back there. So that's for process, but if I wanted to do accordion, then I could just type out the accordion, the title, the description. If I wanted, uh, you can see coming soon, flashcards and knowledge checks. Uh, if I wanted to process, all I have to do is type in that information. So that one doesn't actually generate it from a, a Word doc. That's actually from the source files. So let's go back into here. So you can see that we could do a summary. We can also do a question. So let's go ahead and type in a question. You can see with the questions, it automatically takes the content on this page and suggests a question for me. Now I don't have to use that or I could revise it if I wanted to, or I could change focus or add an answer, but let's just click on insert knowledge check. Now at the end of that page, you can insert a quick knowledge check to be able to test the learner's knowledge on that page which is a little bit nicer integration than you saw with Storyline. With Storyline, I had to select the pages and give it a little bit more of a definition. But in this case, it just automatically assumes you're talking about this page and generates it from there. Now on any of these text features, so let's go up to some of our text here. Now I could select that text and then you can see these three little stars here. This allows me, similar to Storyline, allows me to tweak that text, it allows me to adjust it, to improve it, it allows me to prompt and say, hey, I want some additional text on this. If I insert a text box that is just text, so let's come into here. I could also come in and just select that text, go into the insert, and then just say, tell me, give me specific text on this or workplace safety. And I'm gonna type that in, give me two paragraphs on workplace safety. So I can read through that. Let's go ahead and just um, select to improve that or make it shorter. I made it a little bit shorter. And one of the nice things, and I explored this with Storyline, one of the nice things is it keeps every version of this. So I can go back to the previous version and say, oh, not quite what I wanted. Let's go ahead and try this. And you can add another prompt there. But I can always go back to that previous version and restore it basically. So I can also have it continue writing. I can have it improve the writing, make it shorter, simplify the writing. I can turn it into a bullet list. I can turn it, or I can have it bold keywords. So you can see right now by doing that, it selects keywords in there and I like that. So let's go ahead and replace selection. You can see how it replaced the text and bolds that keyword in there. So some nice text features and it replaces the need for something like Grammarly. If you use Grammarly for that kind of thing, you can do it right inside of Rise here. Now let's go into the AI settings here. Now in the AI settings, this is where I can just upload a bunch of the documents that I want to reference in creating this training. You can also just copy and paste text in here as well. So this gives you those source documents, the source content, the things to stay true to basically when you're creating content, which is extremely helpful. 
And that way you don't have to do that when you're in the text, the text generation field, you can do that just right there. So that's what the AI assistant, you can go into AI tips and tricks as well. So those are some of the things that you can do inside of Rise 360. That is just a quick overview. We did not cover everything. I am going to, in future videos, dive into different sections and really test out what you can do with images, what you can do with text, how you can continuously update the text, and how you can improve the text to get it and refine the text a little bit more. So that is what I'm gonna be covering in future videos. If you wanna check out the video from last week, at the end of the video, it will show you the AI assistant instead of storyline, so check that out. If you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows my channel to continue to grow so I can continue producing these videos for you. And my goal with this channel is to help you become the best learning developer that you can be to break through this basic kind of slide to slide content and create more interactive content. So if you like this, make sure that you like and subscribe to help out my video. You can also head on over to my website at learningdojo.ninja. You can check out all my previous blog posts. You can download free templates and storyline. You can also check out my full courses and Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, custom SCORM and HTML5 video. That's all I have for today, so thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.